Today we're going to be discussing the activity of a radioactive source. Now what is the activity of a radioactive source? Well, it is the rate of decay, i.e. the number of particles that decay per unit time. Mathematically, we can write the equation for activity as delta n divided by delta t, where delta n is the change in the number of particles. In other words, it's the number of the radioactive uh, nuclides that have actually decayed per unit time. Normally, this is measured in per second, and the unit for that is known as the Becquerel. So the base unit for that is actually seconds to a power of minus one. For instance, if, if we were to have, let's say, a thousand decays per one second, well, this means that our activity will be equal to essentially a thousand Becquerels, like so. So this means that there are a thousand decays per second. The other really important quantity that we're going to be using in our study of radioactivity is known as the decay constant. And that is the probability of decay of a single nucleus per second. Because of the definition of the decay constant, the unit for that is normally seconds to the power of minus one. However, in certain situations, for instance, radioactive uh, carbon dating, you may be using years to the power of minus one or hours to the power of minus one, depending on the problem. As long as we're consistent with the units within our question, this should, should not cause any issues. Because the activity is equal to the number of particles that decay per second, and lambda is the probability of decay of a single nucleus, well then the, our activity A will be equal to our decay constant times n, where n is the number of particles. Notice that in this equation here we had delta m, the number of nuclei that have decayed. So those over here are particles which have decayed. I'm just going to write this over here. Particles that have decayed. And this over here is just the number of particles. So it could be the initial number of particles or the number of particles at a given time, giving us the activity at that particular time. But this is the number of particles, not the number of particles that have decayed. So let's apply what we've learned so far to a little problem. If the initial activity of a source is 3.5 times 10 to the power of 10 becquerels and the decay constant is 0.15 seconds to the power of minus one, let's move this over there, find the number of particles, the initial number of particles. The way we're going to do this is essentially by using this formula. So A will be equal to lambda times n and what we can do is just rearrange for the number of particles and we know the initial activity divided by the decay constant so this will be equal to 3.5 times 10 to the power of 10 divided by our decay constant which is 0.15 plugging those into a calculator we're going to get about 2.3 2.33 multiplied by 10 to the power of 11 particles. So how do those two quantities depend on time? Notice that we have a graph of the activity with respect to time and a graph of the number of particles with respect to time. You're going to notice that both of these quantities decrease exponentially. In fact, the mathematics behind this is very, very similar to the mathematics behind capacitors. A, which is the activity at a time t, will be equal to A0, which is the, our initial activity here, multiplied by an exponent, or E, raised to the power of minus lambda, where lambda is the decay constant, times the time t. Exactly the same relationship is also true for the number of particles. n is equal to n naught, where n naught is the initial number of particles, lambda is the decay constant, and t is the time. So let's focus on one of those equations and let's see whether we can rearrange this equation for the time, which is quite a typical exam problem. The first thing which I'm going to do is to rearrange for the exponent. So I'm going to write that n over n naught will be equal to e to the minus 
lambda t. The only way we can deal with this exponential would be if we take the natural log of both sides. So I'm going to say that ln of n over n naught will be equal to ln of e to the minus lambda t. Now remember the natural log and e are inverse functions. So what we are going to get is that ln of n over n naught will be simply equal to whatever is in the exponent because ln and e essentially undo the effect of each other and this will be equal to minus lambda t. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 and I'm also going to remember that if we multiply a logarithm by minus 1 we're essentially swapping the fraction. So um, lambda times t will be essentially equal to the natural log of n naught divided by n. And this is simply due to the properties of the um, logarithm fractions. I have a video about that, so feel free to have a look in the capacitor playlist in which I have explained this in quite great detail. We're almost done. All we need to do really is just uh, rearrange for the time and the time will be equal to the natural logarithm of ln of n naught divided by n divided by our decay constant. Okay folks, so we've done quite a lot of quite a lot of we've covered quite a lot of material today including the activity the decay constant and rearranging this equation for time if there are any questions please let me know and i'll see you in the next video